Arsenyuk Petrovich Yatsenyuk, born the 22nd of May 1974, is a Ukrainian politician, economist and lawyer who served as Prime Minister of Ukraine from the 27th of February 2014 to the 14th of April 2016. Yatsenyuk's first government post was as Minister of Economy from 2005 to 2006, subsequently he was Foreign Minister of Ukraine in 2007 and Chairman of the Verhofna Rada from 2007 to 2008. Yatsenyuk was one of the leaders of Ukraine's second biggest party All Ukrainian Union Fatherland, and former leader of its parliamentary faction. He became the Prime Minister of Ukraine following the 2014 revolution that removed Viktor Yanukovych from power. In September 2014, Yatsenyuk started the new party People's Front. On 16 February 2016, the President of Ukraine, Petro Poroshenko, asked Yatsenyuk to resign saying he had lost the support of the coalition and the same day, the Ukrainian parliament voted the cabinet's work unsatisfactory but rejected a call for a vote of no confidence. On 10 April 2016, Yatsenyuk announced that he would report to parliament on 12 April and resign as prime minister. On 14 April 2016, Yatsenyuk was replaced by new prime minister Volodymyr Groisman. Chapter 1 Early Life and Education Yatsenyuk was born on the 22nd of May 1974, in the Ukrainian SSR's Chernivtsi. His father, historian Petro Ivanovich Yatsenyuk, was a professor at the Faculty of History at Chernivtsi National University and has since become deputy dean of its history faculty. Asini's mother, Maria Grigoritivna Yatsenyuk, has long been a French teacher at area high schools and now teaches in the French Department of Foreign Languages at Chernivtsi University. Yatsenyuk speaks Russian and English as well as having some knowledge of Romanian. Chapter 1 Section 1 Ancestry According to Yatsenyuk, he comes from a family of ethnic Ukrainians, and is a member of the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church. He is of partly Romanian ancestry, one of his ancestors was a citizen of Romania from the region around Chernivtsi. Some sources state he was born to a family of ethnic Romanian Jewish Ukrainians. However, Yakov Blyk, a chief rabbi of Ukraine stated, Arseniy Yatsenyuk is not Jewish. Furthermore, Anna Rudnitskaya said, hypothetical Jewishness was never established. Chapter 1 Section 2 Education after Yatsenyuk began studying at Chernivtsi University in 1992, he set up a student law firm. Yatsenyuk graduated from the university in 1996, and later attended the Chernivtsi Trade Economics Institute of the Kiev National Trade Economics Institute in 2001. In addition to holding a law degree and a master's degree in accounting and auditing, Yatsenyuk also earned a PhD in economics from the Ukrainian Academy of Banking of the National Bank of Ukraine. Chapter 1 Section 3 Legal and Banking Careers From December 1992 to September 1997, Yatsenyuk was the president of Uric Limited, a law firm based in Chernivtsi. From January 1998 until September 2001, Yatsenyuk worked in the Aval Bank based in Kiev. From November 2003 to February 2005, Yatsenyuk served as the first vice president of the National Bank of Ukraine under Serhii Tihipko. After Tihipko left the National Bank, Arseniy Yatsenyuk was put in charge of it. Chapter 2 – Political Career From September until November 2001, Yatsenyuk served as an acting minister of economy of Crimea, and from November of the same year until January 2003, served as the official Minister of Economy of Crimea. After Vassil Tsushko was appointed as the new governor of Odessa Oblast, Tsushko asked Yatsenyuk to serve as his vice governor, which he served from March 9 to September 2005. From 27 September 2005 to 4 August 2006, he served as the Minister of Economy of Ukraine in the Yekinurov government. Arseniy Yatsenyuk then headed talks about Ukrainian membership in the World Trade Organization. 
Yatsenyuk also heads the Ukraine-European Union Commission. From 20 September 2006, he served as the first vice president of the head of secretariat of the president of Ukraine, and the representative of the president in the cabinet of ministers of Ukraine. Yatsenyuk was proposed for the post of foreign minister by the president of Ukraine, Viktor Yushchenko. Yatsenyuk was chosen for the post by the Verhofna Rada on 21 March 2007 with 426 votes, but only after the Ukrainian parliament twice denied the post, to Volodymyr Orizko. Chapter 2 Section 1, Chairman of the Verhofna Rada In the early parliamentary elections held on September 30, 2007, Yatsenyuk was elected to the parliament from our Ukraine People's Self-Defense Bloc. On December 3, 2007, he was nominated for the position of the chairman of the Verhofna Rada from the Democratic Coalition formed from the Yulia Tymoshenko bloc and our Ukraine People's Self-Defense bloc. On December 4, 2007, Yatsenyuk was elected the chairman of the parliament. His candidacy was the only in the ballot, and he obtained 227 votes in favor. During the Ukrainian political crisis of September 2008 Yatsenyuk offered his resignation on September 17, 2008. A vote on his dismissal on November 11, 2008, was declared invalid by the Counting Commission of the Parliament. On November 12, a total of 233 of 226 required deputies satisfied the resignation statement of Yatsenyuk, and thus dismissed him from his post of chairman of the Verhofna Rada. The voting was carried out through the parliament's voting system, and not by means of secret ballots, as stipulated by the parliamentary regulations. After his dismissal Yatsenyuk told journalists that he will form a new political force for change in the country. On November 21, 2008, Yatsenyuk was also dismissed by President Viktor Yushchenko from the National Security and Defense Council. Chapter 2 Section 2, 2010 Presidential Campaign On December 16, 2008, Yatsenyuk announced plans to create a political party on basis of the Front of Change's public initiative. In an interview with Den of February 4, 2009, he claimed to have no allies among the contemporary politicians. He has often been referred to as a political clone lacking differentiating policies of Ukraine's president, Viktor Yushchenko. Polls held in the last months of 2008 suggested a political party led by Yatsenyuk would pass the 3% election threshold in a Ukrainian parliamentary election. On April 5, 2009, Yatsenyuk announced his candidacy for president of Ukraine in the next presidential election. During the election, campaign fellow candidate Serhii Ratushinyak repeatedly insulted Yatsenyuk because of his alleged Jewish roots, among others Ratushinyak called Yatsenyuk an impudent little Jew who was successfully serving the thieves who are in power in Ukraine and is using criminal money to plow ahead towards Ukraine's presidency. Yatsenyuk's presidential campaign was estimated to cost about $60-$70 million. When Yatsenyuk billboards first appeared around Ukraine at the end of June 2009, Yatsenyuk was depicted as a military-style leader, while his previous image was that of a young liberal. Some analysts think that this did not help the campaign. On January 13, 2010, Yatsenyuk stated that his election campaign had cost 80 million rivnia, and that the number of my advertising posters is 10 times less than that of all of my political opponents, Yatsenyuk claimed that funds from his election budget, were mainly spent on his appearances on television. After the elections, Yatsenyuk wanted to dissolve the Verhofna Rada because in his view the parliament would prevent him from working. He also stated in November 2009 that Bloc Yulia Tymoshenko and Party of Regions were almost a single whole. In late November 2009, he stated he was not interested in using his votes as bargaining material for a high political post. On February 21, 2010, President Yanukovych offered three candidates for Prime Minister of Ukraine, Serhii Tihipko, Yatsenyuk and Party of Regions lawmaker Mykola Ozorov. However, 
Yatsenyuk declined this proposal to hold a high post in the new cabinet after the Ukrainian parliament adopted an amendment on March 9, 2010, which enabled independent lawmakers to take part in forming a majority coalition, instead of only parliamentary factions, Yatsenyuk disapproved of this amendment. Instead he called for early parliamentary elections, unconstitutional attempts by parliamentarians to form a coalition and a government would deepen the political crisis, and the crisis of statehood as such. To be premier in a coalition with communists was unacceptable for Yatsenyuk. Yatsenyuk formed an oppositional government in March 2010, next to another oppositional government headed by Bloc Yulia Tymoshenko, opposing the Ozerov government. In April 2010, Yatsenyuk was officially chosen as party leader of Front for Change, by that time the public initiative had become a political party also. Chapter 2 Section 3 – Parliament Faction Leader During the October 2012 Ukrainian parliamentary election, Yatsenyuk competed on a party list based on the party All Ukrainian Union Fatherland. Yatsenyuk stressed in April 2012 front of changes existed and will exist but also hinted the same month the alliance could lay basis for one single party. The party competed on one single party under umbrella party Fatherland, together with several other parties, during the October 2012 parliamentary elections. During the election, this list won 62 seats under the proportional party list system, and another 39 by winning 39 simple majority constituencies, a total of 101 seats in parliament. Yatsenyuk headed this election list because fatherland leader Yulia Tymoshenko was imprisoned. Yatsenyuk was elected leader of the parliamentary faction of Fatherland on 12 December 2012. On 15 June 2013, his Front for Change merged into Fatherland. On 27 October 2013, a few weeks before first Euromaidan mass protests on Maidan Nezeles and Ostai, Yatsenyuk contributed to a trilateral commission meeting in Krakow, presided over by Jean Claude Trichet, on the topic Ukraine and European Union. On 25 January 2014, Yatsenyuk was offered the post of Prime Minister by President Viktor Yanukovych but refused due to unmet demands. Yatsenyuk said the people should be making a decision for the future of Ukraine, not the present government officials. Chapter 2 Section 4 Prime Minister On February 4, 2014, a recording of a phone call between Victoria Newland and U.S. Ambassador to Ukraine, Jeffrey Pyatt on January 28, 2014, was published on YouTube. In their phone conversation, Newland notified Pyatt that after the review of the three opposition candidates for the post of Prime Minister of Ukraine, the U.S. State Department had selected Arseniy Yatsenyuk. She said, I think Yats is the guy who's got the economic experience, the governing experience. What he needs is Klitsch and Tjarnabok on the outside. He needs to be talking to them four times a week. Pyatt asked, do you want us to set up a call with him as the next step? Newland told Pyatt that the next step should be to set up a telephone conversation between her and the three Ukrainian candidates, with Pyatt also possibly participating. Pyatt agreed, I think you reaching out directly to him helps with the personality management among the three and it gives you also a chance to move fast on all this stuff and put us behind it. Yatsenyuk was designated as the new Prime Minister of the Yatsenyuk government following the 2014 Ukrainian revolution that removed former President Viktor Yanukovych from power. The new government was sworn in on 27 February 2014. After his appointment, Yatsenyuk started to distance himself and his government from Russia, which at the same time invaded and later annexed Crimea in response to the ouster of Yanukovych. As the Ukrainian head of government, Yatsenyuk was involved in the Crimean crisis. He described his government as being on a kamikaze mission. On 21 March 2014, Ukraine signed the political part of the association agreement with European Union, with the economical part of the treaty to be signed after the presidential election in May 2014. The day before, Yatsenyuk was replaced as his party's faction leader in parliament by Sergei Sobolev. On 24 July 2014, 
Yatsen Yuk announced that he was resigning from the post of Prime Minister immediately. Earlier that day the coalition supporting his Yatsen Yuk government had collapsed, after Parliament failed to pass legislation to increase military financing and regulate energy matters. Yatsen Yuk had told Parliament history will not forgive us, how are we to pay wages, how are we tomorrow morning going to send fuel for armoured vehicles, how will we pay those families who have lost soldiers, to look after the army. During his announcement of resignation in Parliament Yatsen Yuk hinted that the coalition had collapsed because politicians did not want to be seen involved in making budget cuts and had thus placed political interest above the fate of the country, according to him this was a moral, and an ethical crime. However, his resignation had yet to be officially accepted by Parliament, and they did not do this the day after his resignation. Instead MPs decided that their next meeting will be on 31 July 2014. On 31 July 2014, the Verhofler Rada declined his resignation because only 16 MPs voted for his resignation. On 25 July 2014, the Yatsen Yuk government had appointed Deputy Prime Minister for Regional Policy, Minister of Regional Development, Construction and Housing and Communal Services of Ukraine Volodymyr Hroizman as acting Prime Minister. In September 2014, Yatsenyuk started the new party People's Front. The party won 82 seats in the 2014 Ukrainian parliamentary election. Yatsenyuk was confirmed as Prime Minister at the first session of the new parliament by 341 votes. February 2016 saw the start of Yatsenyuk's downfall as the Prime Minister of Ukraine after Economy Minister Ivaris Obramovichis announced his resignation. Ivaris Obramovichis offered a candid statement about the reasons for his resignation. My team and I have no desire to be a cover for open corruption or puppets for those who want to establish control over state funds in the old fashion. He continued, these people have names. And one of these names I am going to mention. It is Igor Kononenko. As a representative of the political force that nominated me a minister, he has done a great deal recently to block the work of my team and me. After a full-scale smear campaign against Yatsenyuk and his government which former MP Oleksandr Onishchenko later told The Independent about, President Petro Poroshenko asked Yatsenyuk to resign and later on the same day, the Ukrainian parliament voted to find the work the Ukrainian cabinet was doing under Yatsenyuk unsatisfactory, but rejected calls for a vote of no confidence. On 10 April 2016 Yatsenyuk announced that he would resign as Prime Minister and would ask Parliament to fire him on 12 April 2016. He added that his party's People's Front faction remains in the coalition because today, it is the only way to defend the state. On 14 April 2016, Parliament did hold a vote on his resignation resulting in Yatsenyuk being replaced by the new Prime Minister, Volodymyr Groisman, and his Groisman government. On December 2, 2016, Mr. Oleksandr Onishchenko, former Ukrainian MP, told The Independent that he had organized and funded a smear campaign against Arseniy Yatsenyuk and his government. According to Mr. Onishchenko, then President Poroshenko has initiated this anti Yatsenyuk defamation campaign and benefited from it politically. In 2020, using the Index for Monitoring Reforms, Vox Ukraine compared the performance of the last four Ukrainian cabinets. Second Yatsenyuk's cabinet has made the most progress in governmental reforms, including anti-corruption ones, as laws on a number of anti-corruption bodies were adopted at that time. Chapter 3, Political Positions Yatsenyuk does not want Russian to become the second state language in Ukraine. Yatsenyuk wants European Union membership for Ukraine and he sees this because this means standards and values, a level of education, medical treatment, pensions, employment, freedoms, new technologies, and progress. Yatsenyuk stated late 2009 that in its relations with the European Union, Ukraine should have a visa-free regime with the EU countries. Yatsenyuk stated on 20 April 2012 that it was clear to him that the European Union will not sign the association agreement until fully-fledged democracy is resumed in Ukraine, free and fair elections are held, and the political persecution of opponents is stopped in Ukraine. 
Yatsenyuk is against Ukraine joining the Eurasian Customs Union, according to him Ukraine's joining the Customs Union means the restoration of the Soviet Union in a slightly different form and with a different name. But this means that the country will become a part of the Russian Empire. We know history. We have been there and we don't want to return there. On 21 August, 2013, Yatsenyuk stated Russia has decided for some reason, that it can be the architect of a new Berlin Wall. And, according to Russia's design, this wall should appear at the border between Ukraine and the European Union. Yatsenyuk was against the April 21, 2010 agreement in which the Russian lease on naval facilities in Crimea would be extended beyond 2017 by 25 years with an additional five-year renewal option in exchange for a multi-year discounted contract to provide Ukraine with Russian natural gas. Yatsenyuk favors the creation of a special vice prime minister for Crimean issues. In November 2009, Yatsenyuk stated that Ukraine's shadow economy is a part of the current political system in Ukraine and that's why taking business out of the shadows will only be possible via a change in this system. In November 2009 he saw as his most difficult task if elected president to break the political clan system that has been built up over the last 18 years. Yatsenyuk wants to create a common energy company with European Union countries and Russia. According to Yatsenyuk, it will be impossible to fight corruption without changing the country's system of government, the system of government in Ukraine has in fact remained the same as it was under the Soviet Union. In late July 2010, Yatsenyuk wrote a draft law which proposed to fine officials for violating the law on appeals by citizens, thus holding officials personally accountable for ignoring the complaints of citizens. In November 2009, he proposed that a referendum be held on if Ukraine should have an open list voting system. Yatsenyuk is in favor of holding referenda, he calls this nationalization of state power. The amendment of the terms and conditions of the Russian Black Sea Fleet's presence in Ukraine and a decision on Ukraine's membership of NATO and other military alliances are according to Yatsenyuk only possible through a referendum taught in January 2015, Yatsenyuk appeared on the German television channel ARD for an interview with Pinar Ottolai. The interview's live translation contained a controversial statement that was immediately picked up by Russian media, and later spread to other media outlets. The statement typically featured was a variation of all of us still clearly remember the Soviet Union invading Ukraine and Germany. And nobody has the right to rewrite the results of the Second World War. And that is exactly what Russia's President Putin is trying to do. Implying that Yatsenyuk said that it was the USSR who started the war against Germany and not the other way around, this later turned out to be a misrepresentation meant to further the Russian political objectives in Ukraine. The actual statement by Yatsenyuk was Russian aggression against Ukraine is an encroachment on the world order. We all remember well the Soviet invasion both in Ukraine, including, and in Germany. It must be avoided. Nobody is allowed to rewrite the results of the Second World War. Referring the post-World War II Soviet occupation of both Ukraine and East Germany and attempting to draw the parallels between the actions done by Soviets during that period, to the present Russian aggression. This was clarified by Ukrainian officials and Yatsenyuk himself. Yatsenyuk had stated that convicted politicians Yulia Tymoshenko and Yuri Lutsenko should be released and he had proposed slash written laws to make this happen. He also believed their convictions were a difficult obstacle on Ukraine's path to the European Union. In early December 2012, he stated that he was ready to open a dialogue with the authorities only after Tymoshenko and Lutsenko were released. Yatsenyuk states that full transparent privatization of state property is needed, with the exception of strategic companies. In his address to the citizens Yatsenyuk also stood for the appointment of independent executives of all public companies and exposure to deprivation of all political forces. Yatsenyuk states that the strict policy towards any aggressor country which in this case means the Russian Federation is needed. No deals and compromise at the expense of Ukraine. The restoration of the territorial integrity of the Ukrainian state. 
the return of Donetsk, Luhansk, and Crimea, and the extension of sanctions against the Russian Federation until Ukraine has completely restored its territorial sovereignty, Dashi said. Chapter 4 Family Yatsenyuk's wife is Teresa Viktorovna, they have two daughters named Kristina and Sofia. Teresa Yatsenyuk was born into a family of philosophers. Her father, Viktor Ilarionovich Ger, is a professor of philosophy at the Kiev Polytechnic Institute, her mother Svetlana Mikitivna, PhD, is now retired. Yatsenyuk's family has lived near Kiev, since 2003. Yatsenyuk also has a sister Alina Petrovna Jones, residing in the city of Santa Barbara, California, United States. Chapter 5, Open Ukraine Arseniy Yatsenyuk heads the Open Ukraine Foundation, an international foundation based in Ukraine. It was established in July 2007 for the strengthening and development of Ukraine's reputation in the world. Open Ukraine works with the young generation of artists, scholars and community leaders who seek to implement social changes in the different regions. Open Ukraine is partnered with the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, the United States Department of State and Chatham House, among other organizations. Chapter 6 Russian Criminal Charges Slash Interpol Warrant On 28 April 2017, the Russian Prosecutor General's Office confirmed that Russia's National Bureau of Interpol had requested that Yatsenyuk be put on the international wanted list relating to his alleged involvement in attacks on Russian servicemen in 1994-1995, and in 2000 Russia's North Caucasian Republic of Chechnya, that a Yesentuki city court had previously issued an in absentia international warrant for his arrest alleging his violation of three articles of the Criminal Code of Russia namely that he participated in an armed group, including intentional murder. Yatsenyuk, has stated his awareness of these charges he calls a total absurdity, with Ukrainian government's interior minister Arsen Avakov admitting that Interpol sent him a copy of the Russian request and Ukrainian justice minister Pavlo Petrenko stating that he believes Interpol will dismiss Russia's request. Dot on 3 May 2017 Interpol officially dismissed Russian requests such as that doesn't conform Article 3 of Interpol Constitution. Chapter 7, Awards Cavalier of the Order of Prince Yaroslav the Wise 5th Class, awarded on 7 February 2008 for significant personal contribution to the integration of Ukraine into the World Trade Organization. Medal for the Glory of Chernivtsi